Imagine the blockchain as a story building with floors that represent the different layers that make it up. Hop onto the elevator and let us explore one of the most essential floors in the blockchain building, the consensus floor. Without this floor, transaction validation will not take place. Unlike in centralized system where a central administrator maintains and updates the database, decentralized systems disperse this role to different nodes which must reach the same conclusion and agree on the legitimacy of transactions, hence the name consensus. So in this video, we will look at the types of consensus mechanisms besides proof of work and proof of stake. But first things first, why is consensus important? Okay, so for starters, the blockchain needs a single source of truth. This is at least the short version of the answer. To better understand this concept, let's first take a step back and get an overview of how the blockchain is set up to work. At their core, blockchains are databases designed to record and transact information, but these are typical characteristics of most databases, right? So what makes blockchains unique is that the network is distributed, therefore cutting out the need for a central authority. It achieves this by relying on a network of distributed nodes. So node A could be in South America, node B in North Africa, node C in Europe, and so on. Even though they are distributed, they all work together to maintain the transactions that take place upon the network they all share. But most importantly, they will need to achieve a common agreement about the blockchain's true state in real time. And that is where the consensus mechanisms come in. They ensure that all the nodes agree on the legitimacy of the transaction, and if so, it gets approved and then recorded on the blockchain. That said, there are different types of consensus mechanisms, including the most widespread options, proof of work and proof of stake. So watch this three minute video to understand the differences between those two. But in this video, let's dive into the other type of consensus mechanisms, starting with proof of activity, which combines the capabilities of proof of work and proof of stake algorithms. Okay, so proof of activity. So this mechanism goes through two phases before a completely new block is ready for the blockchain. So phase one is known as the proof of work phase, where miners compete against each other with their computing power to generate or mine a new block for the blockchain. The generated block, however, is incomplete. They do not include transactions. Instead, they are embedded with the block reward address and the transaction title. At this point, the system switches to proof of stake. Based on the transaction title information, a random group of validators from the blockchain network is selected to validate the new block. Just like the standard POS, the more coins a validator owns, the more chances they have of being selected. Once all the selected validators have signed the block, it can be completed and may now be attached to the blockchain. Now, while this method of consensus is secure, it still requires a significant amount of energy in its POW phase. Similarly, in its POS phase, the wealthy are favored in that they have a higher chance of being selected as validators. The most notable platform using POA consensus is Decred. Next up, we have proof of authority, which unlike proof of stake and proof of work is geared toward private organizations who want to build their own chains that don't require participation from general users. Proof of authority utilizes a reputation based model to help validate transactions and generate new blocks, whereby instead of validators placing their coins on the line, like in proof of stake, they place their reputation. The system's validators are pre-selected and approved by other network participants to act as moderators. This forces them to confirm their real identities on top of going through a tough selection process which is meant to reduce the risks of selecting questionable validators and incentivize a long-term commitment. 
As you might have guessed, this consensus mechanism is relatively centralized since proof of authority blockchains limit the number of validators. This, however, makes the systems highly scalable. Regardless, it is commonly criticized for revealing the identities of validators as it could potentially lead to third party manipulation. For instance, say company one uses POA consensus with publicly known validators, its competitor may try to influence the validators to act dishonestly in order to compromise its system from within. VeChain is an example of a popular platform that uses a proof of authority algorithm. Okay, then consensus number three on our list, proof of burn, is another alternative of POW that tries to be more sustainable. In proof of burn, miners gain the power to mine a block by intentionally and permanently destroying tokens. The more tokens a miner burns, the higher the chance that they will be selected as the next block validator. The idea here is to encourage long-term commitment from miners by demanding that they sacrifice short-term wealth through the burning of their tokens to gain the lifetime privilege to create new blocks. Burning has other perks like making the coin scarce, hence ideally driving up its value and limiting inflation. The consensus mechanism also uses far less energy than classic proof-of-work systems. Rather than investing in powerful mining hardware, the system incentivizes miners to demonstrate their dedication to the network through intentional token destruction. For example, Slimcoin, a virtual currency, allows miners to burn their coins, which not only gives them the right to complete for the next block, but also gives them the chance to receive blocks for at least a year. Okay, so by now you might have noticed that most of these consensus mechanisms intend to be an improvement upon either proof of work or proof of stake, and proof of capacity is no exception. As the name suggests, it bases its mining algorithm on the amount of space available in a miner's hard drive. Before going any further, let's draw a quick analogy. So say James has 10 basketballs and Joe only has three. They are challenged to make at least three shots each, with the number of attempts limited to the number of balls that they have. So in this case, James has the upper hand, right? So similarly, POC stores a list of possible solutions on the mining device's hard drive before mining starts. And so the larger the hard drive, the higher the capacity to store more solutions. This means that miners with more storage space have a higher chance to match the required hash value from their list, resulting in more chances to win the mining reward. POC can use any regular hard drives, therefore opening the door for regular users to participate, making it more decentralized. However, as it stands, not many developers have chosen to adopt to the system and also there have been concerns about the effect of malware attacks on mining activities. Cryptocurrencies such as Chia and Signum, formerly known as Burstcoin, use the POC system. Okay, next up we have the consensus mechanism used by Solana proof of history. So this mechanism allows for timestamps to be built into the blockchain itself to prove that a block was created at a certain time. So think of it this way. Say you were present at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa and you took photos. So you create proof that the photos were taken during the 2010 World Cup, right? Not before, not after, because the competition took place at a specific time. So similarly, with proof of history, you basically create a historical record that proves an event took place at a specific time. So this mechanism is enabled by what is known as sequential hashing verifiable delay function. It works by taking the output of a transaction and using it as input for the next hash, which enables everyone to clearly see which event took place in a particular sequence. While proof of history is highly scalable, validators hardware needs to meet certain specifications, otherwise they are excluded. This means that the consensus has to sacrifice decentralization for speed. 
Okay, next up we have proof of importance, a consensus mechanism that attempts to solve proof of stake's problem of inherently favoring the rich. So it achieves this by incorporating additional factors when weighing each node's level of on-chain influence. A score is given based on a variety of factors that include but are not limited to the number and size of transactions in a given period. So the higher the activity of a node in the network, the higher the score and the higher the probability of being chosen to harvest a block and receive the block rewards. As mentioned, since proof of importance integrates additional metrics, the nodes are picked based on the overall support of the network rather than simply the amount staked. NEM, a blockchain launched in 2015, pioneered the proof of importance mechanism to prevent the hoarding of tokens and prioritize users that support the network. Okay, last but not least, we have delegated proof of stake, one of the evolutions of the proof of stake concept whereby users of the network vote and elect delegates to validate the next block. For example, a crypto user, Mary, might decide to vote on a certain delegate of her choice by pooling her tokens into a staking pool and linking them to the delegate. DPoS typically allows 20 to 100 delegates to be chosen for each block. Also, the delegates verifying transactions on one block might not be the delegates for the next. After successfully validating a block, elected delegates receive transaction fees from the validated block and the reward is then shared with users who pooled their tokens depending on the amount that they staked. So DPoS is not only fairer through democracy, but is also quicker since there are a limited number of delegates. Currently, a number of blockchains, including EOS and Tron, use DPoS. Ultimately, from our non-exhaustive list, it's clear that there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to verifying decentralized systems. While POW and POS are certainly the most widespread and adopted consensus mechanisms, more of them will surely pop up to try to improve upon the preceding ones. So which consensus mechanism do you think should be adopted more by developers? Well, let us know in the comments. And of course, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya.